Hello everybody, my name is Alan, I'm from CyberLab and today will be another video about Oracle Cloud. In this video, we'll show how you can install Plex in your instance. In this way, you have one extra streaming media application installing your Oracle Cloud. Remember, in order to install this Plex in your Oracle Cloud, we're gonna need to have Docker installed, we're gonna need to create an instance, of course, and we need to have uh, our clone install. But don't worry, I will not go to show how to install, but I'll go to some basic for at least you know what uh, you are dealing with. So if you like this idea and want to learn a little bit more about it, we're gonna show in this video, but first of all, don't forget to leave your like, subscribe for the channel, and let's do it. So before you start to do any installation or before we start to install Plex, we're gonna go for the basics. First of all, I have my instance created. This instance have this IP address and is running with Ubuntu. If I go a little bit down, I have uh, three cores, three gigabytes of uh, bandwidth and uh, 18 gigabytes of um, run memory. If I go down here, I have some uh, graphics or some metrics that run, but don't worry, this one was some trials that I was doing, and I don't know how it's so much writing, but uh, don't worry about it. So basically, this instance only create for the Plex. This reason that it's called Plex Server. After this one, now I will open the putty and see what application, what uh, configuration that I did so far using our clone. So here I have to put open. In this case, I create a little bit big instance because I wanted to install all my Plex server. And because I have quite a lot of media, Plex have an app that they will download the metadata or some pictures in your server. And that if you don't have enough space, soon you're gonna run the problem that you lack of space and that will have another problem for you. So this is the reason that I have only two instances in this account. One of those, it's working with WordPress and the second one, it's work with the specs. This reason that is 4.4, but once that you finish it to do all your setup, they will go a little bit higher. If I come here, now we're looking as a root, so we'll put sudo, so, and I will clear off the page. Here I have my rclone already installed, so if I put rclone config, I see what kind of configuration that I have in my rclone. In my case, I have two configuration. The first one is uh, G Drive, that uh, I'm using Google Drive, so they connect directly to my Google Drive. And the second one will be my G Drive Crypto. This G Drive Crypto, it's mainly for encrypt all my data. So I don't want that uh, Google know what I have there, or I don't want that no one knows what information that is there. So it's already created. If I quit this one and I come in my folder CD empty, I have some folders there. If I put LS to see what I have, I have uh, my G Media Cloud and my Arclone. I already did use it using the mount services. So every time that my computer restart, they'll do this automatically mount for me. If you don't know about it, have a look in one of my previous video where I show how to do this mount and that uh, it's more easy for you. But to avoid this video to be too long, I will not show a specific how to do this fuse mount or configuration clone because I already posted it before. So here I have uh, two folders. The first folder is G Media Cloud where I have all my media. Let's open this one, CD. And I open here, I put LS and I have all my folders. So I have my anime, books, movies and continue on. Also I have my art clone here where I have all the configuration for my clone, all the cache. Not necessarily that it's important to have cache, but if you want, you can do some five or 10 gigabytes of cache. Only to avoid that delay to look for the data all time in the Google Drive, at least this latency reduce for some small files. I don't suggest you to create 56, seven gigabytes of cache because you end up using all the memory or all the capacity for your instance and that you end up having problems with it. What other thing that I need to have? I need to have the Docker install, I need to have the Portain install. So let's minimize this page. So now let's close this page because I don't need it anymore. And I come here in my portainer. If I come here in my portainer, means that I have portain install. In order to have portain install, you need to have dock install first of all. So only proof that I have these two applications right installed. And if I come here in stock, I already create a stock that's called Plex. Here in the Plex, I come edit. Here's the Docker Compose that you can find directly in the 
Linux Server Plex website. And we're gonna use it in the first time, but then I will show why it's not interesting to use as a host and we're gonna change as a bridge. This reason that it's host yet here and in the link in the description or the description of the video will have a, as a bridge only because some modification, but at least you know why I want to do it. Here I already modified my POID, my PJD for the root. If you try to use as a Ubuntu user, it will not work well. And here the time zone, I didn't modify, but you need to modify for your location. Here you mask, and here it's the volumes that we need to configure. The volume that we create inside the MMT will call Plex. The second volume will be the transcode or the run memory. I want to make some trials using the run memory to transcode my data. It's plenty of space to have my transcode for my Plex plus the extra necessity of the run memory. And the last I have my media where it's all my Google Drive that I read make my moment point. The ports that I'm using is 32400, so it's a standard Plex port. And now I can come here and put update the stock. Because I had the load already, the image it will be quite fast. I can come here in container, Plex, and I can go in log and see what it's going on. Here log, the red appear done. So I can come here back in my instance cloud, and I come here in my virtual machine, and I come here in my virtual cloud network. I come here in my subnet my default link and I need to configure this port to be open, the port 32400. The protocol will be TCP and the source will be all my machines. I could dedicate only for one specific machine but it's easy only to dedicate for all of those. So I can come here and put save. I have this port open and I have this IP address working and now the machine say that it's working. Normally if I use my house I only go to access this IP address plus port 32. So let's do it. 32400 web, exactly what they say here and they should have access it, no? No, they don't work this way and I didn't know in the first time this reason that I delayed this video until I realized, see if I come here in my instance again and here in my instance, if I look here my private IP address so my IP address to, from the network is this IP address and this reason that they don't work because it's work as a host so if I come here, open my put again, exactly the same IP address, U button, my IP address, if I come here, my SSH, and come in tunnel. This tunnel that you need to configure, it look like a VPN between your server or your home and to your server. If you don't want to use this one, you can use WarnGuard, OpenVPN, or other service to connect to your server. But in this case, we're gonna use it because this is for me. I have the port 32400, so the source will be this one, and the destination will be 127.0.0.1 to dot 32400. So can I come here and open this connection? Once that it's properly connect, I can open a new page and access it exactly that same IP address. Access it with exactly that same IP address, the IP at right this page. Of course, I need to have the login for my Plex, otherwise they ask which account that you need to connect but let's come here and put next. I want to get some premium, no, not at stage, let's close it. And I can define the name of my Plex, and I can define the name for my Plex server. I can come to library. In the library, I can add my some media. So I come here, movies, movies, and I select the folder. Remember that they will create a volume called media. So it's this one. So we will open here and have all my media. In the first time that I was thinking to create this one, I will go directly my movies, but uh, my movies have uh, some movies that I cannot post in the uh, YouTube. So I come here my YouTube videos and I put OK and I put add library. So once that it's create these uh, movies, I can put next and finish it. Now if I come here in configuration and come here, have my Plex server, they are nearby because they am connect for the same network. If I come here in library and put this scan library, they will scan, of course, it's only one video, so it will be really, really fast it. If I come here back and come for my films, they are processing because I don't have thumbnail, they will take a little bit longer time, but I can come here and put play. So now we start my video. If I pause here and put my configuration, they are running with the original quality. So it's 4K and it's work directly. If I wanted to transcode this video, they will work. Yes, they will work. Let's come here and put show all and put for, uh, I don't know, 1080p. 
and put to play. They'll take a little bit time because they will need to download all the data, transcode, and we didn't configure the transcode folder directly in my run memory. So they will do in the speed for the Oracle Cloud hardware. So let's stop here and let's uh, configure my transcode for this one. I come here, settings, I come here in transcode, advanced. Now I need to select the transcode temporary path. So let's open again my configuration from my stock and I come here and I copy this information that will be exactly the same volume that I create. I come here in my Plex, edit this one and put save. Now what they're gonna do, they will transcode all my data directly in my run memory and they will should work faster. So let's see if it's really work fast. I come here again, my media, I put here play and I want to transcode in a different quality. Let's say 1080p. Now all the data it's going directly for my run instead of my hardware. So they should work a little bit fast. Of course, the limitation for this one will be my CPU. They don't have hardware acceleration, only CPU acceleration. And now I will try to use this Plex directly for the Plex application. I will come here and put open Plex. It'll take some seconds. And now have my media. Let's uh, come here and they will take a little bit to connect and you're gonna see what's the problem for it. Once that connect, they will appear in directly connection. If I come remote access, they say not accessible for external. And check what the private IP that I have. I have that internal network. It's not external. It's not track link between the Docker to the network. So it's only internal for your internal network or internal router, internal network. But maybe this reason that's not work, manual settings not configured. So let's come here back where I was accessed directly. Come here and I put manual port and retry. And let's wait to see if it's really this problem or not. So I try this, try to put a manual specific port and they still not properly connect. And they still not properly connect here. And you're gonna ask Alan, what can I do? You can see, he's still not connect. And they say no access net externally. What will affect it? Because I think that I can still use in my media. Yes, you can still use in your media. Let's come here, put play, and you're gonna see what's the problem. I put play here. They are 4K media, and I put play. If I come here, they are converted only for 328p. So all the time that you work with a not properly connect network, you cannot do a trackly transmission, and you cannot have a really high rates transcoding. So all the time you're gonna see a really bad quality. And I come here and only have worse quality. It's good for me? No, it's not good for me. So let's close here. And now this one is not accessible anymore. So let's change this one for bridge and let's update the stock. One thing that I will do, I will create a new folder for the Plex for do the configuration from zero. And I put here and I update the stock. They'll take some seconds after this one. I can come here my container, check here and put in log. So all the configuration should be done. After this stock has been created, we need to do exactly the same step. We need to open our putty, come here my tunnel that has been configured and open it. Because I create a new folder, we need to configure everything from zero. That's it, some seconds again. Let's open here and open exactly the same IP address and go, got it. What you want to do, close it, the name, Plex server, and I come next. I will add my library. So come here, movies, the same kind of library that I have before. Media, YouTube, yes, I want. Okay, next. And I done it. So now I come here and I will create a read my transcode folder, only to guarantee transcode here. And I save it. Here the network remote, I need to enable it and put apply. Once that I enable this port, they already appear. Full access outside for your network. So it's exactly what we want. Let's uh, go here and open our Plex again. But before let's close this putty that I will no longer have access for this IP address because I don't have the tunnel anymore. I come here my Plex and open again my Plex. Come here configuration. And I have my Plex server connected. So they ask for some update, later we can do it. And I have my library configured with uh, movies or films. Let's come here and see if it's working the way that we want. Movies and put play. Now we can configure it. Now I don't want to transcode this quality. I want to go for original play. And now they are able to do it. So I can go and select any quality that I want. I can put as a full quality or I can reduce the quality the way that I want. And I have access it anywhere, any place. 
Okay, if I try to open the port 32400 slash web, someone will access and control my server. Let's do one trial. I come here and I create with another user. It's not a user cyber lab, it will be my cyber lab that I have. I come here and I will change it. Let's see if I can have access to it. 32400 slash 32400 slash web. And let's try to open it. And I say, I want to log in with this one. Yes, I can try to do it. And I have access for it. No, I don't have access for the server. I don't have anything. I cannot access that one at all because that server, it's only connected to my user server lab. Any other user that try to access that same IP address will directly, directly for your Plex, the same way that you're gonna open website or web Plex.tv. So I hope that you guys like this video. I'm sure that some of you are gonna ask why I need to connect my Oracle Cloud to my R clone, and it's easy answer. You have only 200 gigabytes of uh, raw capacity when you run in a free tier on Oracle Cloud. If you want to extend, of course, you can pay more, but uh, because I already have some extra cloud available for me, so it's easy to connect it. Also, if you want to have a lot of transcode, they will not work as you expect because we'll have the limitation for it. So guys, if you like this video and think that was interesting, don't forget to leave your like, consider to subscribe for the channel and see you next time. Bye.